Hello and welcome back. I know it's been a while, but there was a huge update to Vintage Story and I wanted to take advantage of it. I wanted to dive back in and I'm glad I did because um, I had a lot of fun. I, I played for a couple hours and so this is a reduction of all of that in uh, time lapse. But um, I had to really kind of relearn how to play Vintage Story. Not everything, but uh, a lot of things um, sort of came back to me over time. But I started by go ahead and, and getting our crops ready or not ready but reaping them you'll see that uh, that wood is got a new coat of paint it looks it looks quite nice the stacks of wood logs look a lot better now um, there have been a little bit a uh, little like kind of graphical quality of life touches added here and there um, I remember a long long back when uh, you know the last upload uh, someone mentioned that might have been that one of my uh, some of my beehives were being raided and uh, I could see potentially by what I know raccoons but also we we seem to have a new resident in the area which has been um, somewhat harassing me although I will say that the bears in some ways are not as bad as the wolves and I'll talk about why um, later but uh, you know foreshadowing so I started by cooking some food and uh, with the plans of making a fence for our beehives because I do want to make use of that it's mostly a light situation like I want to be able to harvest those uh, hives for the wax but uh, then there's other reasons as well well you know uh, I think we'll finally be able to harvest one of those maybe next time I also have to solve this light situation I don't know if maybe it was one of the recent updates that uh, made it so that uh, there's like a large uh, um, a lower light threshold for creatures to be able to spawn but it's creating quite a problem for me so um, I in this episode I'm going to be dealing with that by uh, making moves for more light just in general and you know why not like I, I don't think that brass is all that much of an expensive um, resource so and uh, you know either way I'm gonna have to mine some more copper so it doesn't really matter how I use it um, but uh, first thing in order is I have to get a lot of sticks for the fence um, you know, and I, I did notice um, as I was kind of roaming around in, um, you know, my beehives that there one of them like was missing and there was just like uh, some cattails in its place. So I definitely think that the, the bear had its way with um, some of my beehives. But uh, luckily I, I have rectified the situation, hopefully. Um, but I did notice really nearby my my base were some of goats sheep i'm not sure ewes they were just kind of hanging out and uh, i decided to capitalize on the situation i created some troughs and i was hoping it would lure them in but it didn't really seem to uh, i'm not sure I, i'm really not sure how best to figure out animal husbandry so i'm just kind of winging it for now uh, i will probably end up looking at a guide or some some way like I know it's it's obvious in Minecraft you know you can just kind of lure them in but uh, it's not as straightforward in Vintage Story and I kind of appreciate that I mean it would not be so straightforward so but um, despite the fact that I wasn't able to kind of um, you know entice them in with food I decided to just kind of like nudge this guy in and uh, that actually worked out I mean it, it was a little bit of a lengthy process but did end up actually working out and I mean that doesn't look wrong at all it looks totally fine and uh, yeah so there's our there's our first animal and that's kind of a huge milestone uh, those troughs say that they're suitable or ideal for sheep and uh, pigs and I'm not sure if ewes are either one of them look I know that's showing like ridiculous levels of ignorance but um, you'll have to forgive me. I'm, I'm I'm a city lad and I don't know these things. I know that's not a good excuse, but <laughs> listen well, Let me let me just uh, I'll just throw down my ignorance card here. Okay, I did uh, know that there was a second There's a baby you and so I wanted to grab that one as well And I managed to find it and uh, it was actually significantly easier because I was able to guide it through the front doors there And so we have two animals actually Which is pretty good I'll have to divide up. This was always planned to be my, uh, it was originally my farm area, um, but now has become my, my kind of animal uh, pen. Uh, and uh, I will probably upgrade it maybe with a roof later. Um, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do some stuff. It'll, it'll be nice. It's not just gonna look like that forever. You know me, I like to make things look lived in. 
Um, but uh, we got our fence around the beehives and uh, I definitely felt like there needed to be more um, in there. I still need to deal with this light situation because there's lots of these lads spawning in my house. It's kind of a problem. Best thing I can do right now is just kind of sleep after I've killed them because it seems to let me get away with that. But yeah, no, uh, I guess I prioritized bees and I needed to do a lot of farming, a lot of chopping down cattails. And at first I was just chopping down the cattail stalks. Uh, and then I came around to the idea of, hey, why not make this job easier for myself by future proofing it and cut down the roots as well. And uh, there, there was a wolf howl in the background, but I never actually came across a wolf. A very rare episode of me not dying to a wolf. Instead, we died to, no, we don't actually die to a bear here. I flee for my life, make no mistake. You'll see it here. This was a terrifying sight. Just a bear like chasing you. It kind of, kind of like Crash Bandicoot chased me down, but they seem to have um, kind of a very shallow um, aggro range and they just kind of like, eh, whatever, go away, it's fine. So that's kind of nice. Wolves, they will chase you for miles and they just suck. Also, they they tend to be faster than you, maybe sometimes. Anyway, um, you know, wolves suck. Bears, not so bad. I'm actually cool with the bear for now. We'll see. We'll see if things develop with the bear. Um, I am playing with the idea of maybe uh, taking it down, but I need more arrows and literally any protection. But uh, it occurred to me that, hey, the bear probably has some fat on it and I, I could definitely use some more of that. So I'm putting, I put some more skep, I will not skep, sorry, um, oh, what is that? I can't actually remember what that is. But anyway, I put some of my grain in there. Um, just trying to like cover all my bases and, and make sure that the ewes are, are fed. Uh, and then I tried to get back into this whole leather business. And yeah, definitely during this process, it, it occurred to me like, yeah, this is not really um, a good situation with the leather. I need a leather tanning area. Um, and uh, so I the, the new plan is to basically deconstruct this and create a new area, probably on the second floor, where I have, you know, kind of three barrels per process step so that, you know, I can actually, you know, cascade leather a little bit more uh, nicely and, uh, you know, process leather a lot more quickly. I actually thought it was being attacked there again, but it turns out it was starving. So I thought that was a pretty funny little moment. But yeah, I mean, like, um, I probably am going to run out of oak wood, but I'm very good for borax. There was that one uh, session where I found a really, really decent borax mine. And I think there's even still some borax there. So uh, I, I definitely made sure I didn't have to worry about borax for a long time. I'm not sure what I'm getting leather for, but uh, I know I want it and I know I probably want to make some armor. I might even want to make some backpacks. I'm not sure. Um, maybe you can let me know in the comments what's uh, what's a good use of the leather. If it's just armor, then that's that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'm happy with that. But, um, you know, I know it's it's something I'm going to need a lot of. So that out of the way, that done. Uh, I come back up here, do a little bit of planning. I still have to, I realize that, you know, the windmill is not complete. This series is definitely not done until at the very least that windmill uh, sees completion. And I know that in a way that's just the beginning because that means we have power generation for interesting things like um, actual metal working um, and being able to have like automated metal smithing. So that's something I definitely want to get into before I you know, call it for the series. And you know, like, uh, vin I I'm in it deep with Vintage Story. I don't plan, like, at this point, I think if I wanted to play something Minecraft adjacent, I would play Vintage Story every time. And when I say Minecraft adjacent, I mean, like, if I was going to play a Minecraft-like game, it would probably always be Vintage Story at this point. Um, I don't see myself going back to Minecraft anytime soon, unless I want to load up, like, an Infinity Mods. We might have caught that. You now need tongs to uh, hold a piping hot uh, smelted metal uh, container. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much to all those who were like, it's not realistic. Yeah, I mean, cool. Now I need tongs. And you know, it's not a big deal for me. Um, it takes uh, twine, uh, flax twine and sticks. It's not a big deal for my case. 
but like if i was starting the game anew and i was like in order to get to metal smithing by the way you need uh you need flax twine and you need sticks and it's just like an extra extra step i'd be a little bit um like uh yeah, thanks a lot guys what did we really need another you know uh, i know it's immersive and it's realistic but dang, god just damn i was i was cool with holding the the 700 celsius degrees hot uh you know piping hot container i thought that was fine we don't need everything to be uh you know a, a reflection of reality and it's fine I'll, I'll get over it i think my my biggest problem with it honestly is that you can't hold, put the tongs up against the wall and you can't put them up on a tool shelf I think that that's a bug. I think that'll probably be fixed in the future. But for now, I think tongs are just kind of a pain in the butt and I'm not a huge fan. I'm sure, I'm sure the, they'll be uh, fixed. Also, this is the beta I should have mentioned. Um, this is not actually the, the full release of the update yet. I think everything is working out fine. I know it's kind of a risk um, doing this with my, my main world, but everything seems to be working out really well. So I'm, I'm happy with that. We made some more skips. I definitely want to, I have to figure out a system for this hive field um, because there's a way of harvesting uh, skips. You basically just break them. So you have to make sure that you always have some, at least some beehives in the area. And I want to kind of figure out a, a, a good balance for when to break uh, a skip and when to, you know, like leave it be so that its population can uh, repopulate the, the whole field. And I thought I'd leave it on a high note. I finally, finally, finally dealt with this stupid lead. It's been pending for probably many, many episodes. And now like months since I took a little hiatus from Vintage Story, but I finally made these leaded uh, glass plane panes, not planes. That would be, that would be amazing. A lead plane and you can just fly around now. So uh, yeah, I, I went ahead and made these panes and uh, spruced up the the long boat slash uh base slash uh you know barn slash warehouse um whatever this place is called we should really figure out what to, what this place is um but i'm liking it i'm liking it more and more uh i think it, uh, it still it has room for growth and it has room for a bit of touches here and there to make it feel a bit more like a, a place a home but anyway, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.